Hi, this time I'm going to continue with these 17 Japanese rituals and occult games. In the previous part, in the second story, the, the video, when it comes to the story, it became quite choppy. Luckily, my explanations were not affected, but yes, uh, things got a bit really choppy at, in that part. So what I am going to do is I am going to leave the mouse over the play button so that the screen moves even less. You know, because the play and the red bar disappears when you move out away the, the mouse. So I'm going to try it out and see if things get a bit less choppy. If you haven't seen the other parts of this series, please check out the playlist in the description. Uh, as always, I apologize if there is a bit of, of choppiness when I pause and unpause the video. And for those of you that don't think these things are real or whatever, Consider it fantasy or fiction to use as inspiration in your tabletop RPGs. Let's get started. Satoru-kun. Yet another game that involves contacting a spirit to tell you what you're dying to know. Satoru-kun is said to be an all-knowing spirit who takes the appearance of a young boy. To contact him, you will need to track down a pay. When it comes to demons, their favorite disguises are those that have that represent vulnerability. Small children, old men, old women. Remember that demons do not actually change shape as easily. There are a few demons that could have that ability, but in most cases, they use etheric bodies. I have mentioned this in other parts of this series. As humans, we have several bodies the physical body, the etheric body, the astral body, etc. When we die, our etheric bodies, they're kind of like an, an envelope. And depending on many things, if the person dies when there is a demon nearby, or the, pe the person passes away and for some reason or another, the awareness or the consciousness of the person, the soul, let's call it like that, the, the soul leaves that etheric body, the etheric body remains as a sort of floating shell. That's why in ancient times, when someone died from a violent wound or disease, they usually used to burn people before. The uh, This has to do... I'm going to put a link to a video where I talk about the concept of immortality and this is all science fiction because you will see that certain things were caused were enacted uh, by the part of, of religions so that the process would be more difficult but in ancient times it was quite common for the people to burn their dead and that way the etheric shell would also be affected by fire fire because it is an element that connects the ethereal with the physical you cannot grab fire you can only hold something that is on fire, but fire is somewhat ghostly. It's like this energy that affects matter, but it also, it's kind of like ghostly, ghostly. You cannot, give me a piece of fire. Here you go, no. So that's why you got rid of the leftover etheric shells, the etheric body. But if a demon spots an etheric body floating somewhere, that demon is going to grab it and he's kind of like, oh, good a costume for me, uh, clothes for me, and they are going to dress up. They could even shrink their essence, so to speak, so that it fits the child, etheric body, whatever the case, the body of an old woman, an, an old man. And that's why they say, oh, it's the spirit of a small boy, and he's so harmless. Just the other day, I was listening to this anecdote by a member I think an ex-member of the Mexican military, in his base, there was this haunted room where they kept all of their weapons. And one time he was assigned to be like the guard of that room and he was sleeping inside that room. It was the second floor of the building. And during the night, he kept feeling as if someone was pulling at his sleeping bag. And he woke up and he saw this small child with black eyes completely black eyes, no no white whatsoever, looking at him. And he was dragging the sleeping bag 
towards this area of the stairs where there were no, uh, how you call them, the handholds, the banisters. There were no banisters. He was trying to drop the soldier to his death. And the soldier woke up and the little child went uh, away running because these beings are affected by metal weapons. That's why in magical ceremonies, you're usually armed with a sword, with knives, etc., to uh, disrupt or disintegrate these entities in science fiction. So the, it's obvious that this demon was aware that a soldier was usually armed with a knife or could even employ bayonets. Depends what it is at hand, close by. Usually knives, combat knives and such. And so, because who knows how long that entity has existed, right? Pro it's probably already familiar with the ways of soldiers. So that's obviously not a small kid. That's not a child. That's a demon. Oftentimes demons trick people into thinking that they are human spirits when they are not. They are demons under the disguise of the etheric body or etheric shell. I think this is one of such cases. Let's continue. Phone. Have enough change to use said payphone and have a cell phone. Yes, your assumption that a burner phone would be better than a personal phone is correct. And I'm proud of you. You're learning. Step one, insert the coins into the payphone and call your cell phone. Step two, say the following chant. Satoru, Satoru, please come here. I think it will be quite irresponsible to use a payphone because you're, there's a small chance that payphone, the booth or whatever, ends up haunted or cursed. Let's continue. Satoru Satoru, please show yourself. Satoru Satoru, please answer me if you are there. Step three. After that, hang up the... They mention... They call upon this entity six times. Always be suspicious about using the numbers four or six when summoning these creatures or even 13. You could be contacting a lower plane of existence, some someplace, one of the superficial levels, potentially one of the superficial levels of hell. And throughout history, Practitioners have tried to contact demons because they are privy to some details that are only able to be, that you can only obtain in those planes. They, as I have mentioned in another part of, the, of this series, they have access to certain knowledge. And at the same time, some knowledge about the material world is denied to them. But when it comes to some details concerning treasures, death, those things are quite easy to perceive in those planes of existence. Let's continue. Pay phone and turn off your cell phone. If everything goes right, you will receive a call from Satoru Kun within 24 hours. He will tell you where he is in relation to you, then hang up. This will continue multiple times with Satoru Kun getting closer and closer with each call. Finally, Satoru Kun will call and say he is right behind you. Do not delay, do not look at him, and do not try to touch him. Ask your question and you'll receive an answer. You can only ask him one question, so make a count. Once you are done, thank him for his time and hang up. You may feel that he's still there. Continue to look forward until you feel his presence disappear. After that, there are always these guidelines, these strict rules on how to contact these beings. And they, they will always try to trick you. It's like that myth. What was the name of this? The guy that played the harp in Greek mythology. Ah, I, I can't believe I forgot about him. A lot of you know who I, who I mean. You know the one, the guy who went into the nether realms, went into hell to retrieve the soul of his loved one his beloved and the condition was that they should keep on walking without looking behind so that's pretty common i think that this ritual i think it can work but as i have mentioned maybe there's always that chance that there is a trick 
Just by the look of it, I think it is actually possible to obtain some information, but demons are not all knowing. You cannot be completely certain that they will answer what you are asking. So maybe you go through all of this risk and the demon doesn't know the answer. What a waste of time, right? And even putting yourself in danger. It's always challenging to identify which of these sorts of more realistic occult games are real and which are not. But if this ritual is supposed to be real, I think it, it, it's, there's actually a good chance of it working. Although I think that the communication, instead of actually hearing a voice, you will perceive some sort of vibration. It would be like, rather that they place thoughts on your head. Maybe the, all, the, all the time, the phone calls, they are not exactly that you are hearing someone on the other side of the line but you hear something directly into your mind, like, I am here, right? Like, they send that message into you, and you can carry out the com communication, but the risk is still quite real, I would say. Let's continue. Destroy the phone. If you look at him, try to physically interact with him in any way, or even do the foolish thing of calling satoru Kun without having a question to ask, he will drag you kicking and screaming to the underworld. Okay, this is not going to be, well, I think that in most cases, it's not going to be like some portal is going to open and you're going to be spectacularly dragged into hell. It's more like something bad will happen to you afterwards. So maybe the person messed up during the ritual and now this entity is going to kill that person in some way. Car accident, disease, something like that. And that's the way how the creature drags you to hell. Let's continue. The Bath Game Also known as Daruma-san, this game is especially dangerous, but I'm sure those that would even consider performing any of the rituals discussed thus far would take that as a challenge. To play, you'll only need a bathroom that has a bathtub. Step 1. Before going to bed for the night, head to the bathroom. Be sure to leave a towel and a change of clothes outside of the bathroom as well. Again, using the energy of water as a conduit or battery for these forces to manifest themselves. Step 2. Fill the bathtub with water and turn off the lights. Step 3. Either remove your clothing or keep it on as you enter the bathtub. Sit down in the middle of it and face the direction of the faucet. Once you're in position, close your eyes and begin washing your hair. Step 4. Repeat the phrase, Doruma-san fell down. Doruma-san fell down. If everything is as planned, you will soon get the mental image of a Japanese woman standing in the bathtub. She slips and falls onto a rusty tap, gouging with her eyes out. As shocking as this might be, do keep your eyes shut and keep repeating the phrase. Step 5. You may start to hear or feel movement in the water behind you. You're smart. You should know what you don't do here by now. Instead, ask aloud, why did you fall in the bathtub? Step 6. One thing to be aware of is that sometimes in occult procedures, processes, there are these words that seem pretty harmless on their own. I have encountered spells that seem so common. They they say something very like you would say this is this is rubbish. This this doesn't work. I'm going to make something up. This is not a real spell. Let's say I eat the apple and it tastes yummy. And you do that as part of the ritual. You would you would think that's those aren't magic words. I, I eat the apple and it tastes yummy. It doesn't make sense. But in that particular ritual, the words have a completely different meaning. I remember one time when I was carrying out this ritual from a very dangerous, rather deceitfully, deceitfully, deceitfully dangerous. Um, yes, you could call it a grimoire. It's not exactly that. In order to 
avoid it, putting people at risk. Maybe someone is watching this video and, this, and he or she is at a, at a state in their lives when they are taking risks. There is a particular book that they're pretty much the advanced notes of a student of the occult, one of the more famous occultists. In order just to warn people, that is without giving the exact spell or whatnot, Eliphaz Levy. And there are some very dangerous things, very dangerous incantations in his works. So I, I took a look at this spell and I was like, these words, they, it almost seems like a, an average person came up with them. Let's try them out. I prepared everything in the ceremony and I started to chant those words in order to contact beings to obtain knowledge. And then on the wall of my room, on the wallpaper, this shadowy creature started to take shape. It, it literally looked like someone took a piece of charcoal or some like dark thing and they started to create the shape on the wall. And I was like, I started to sense this and I was, no, this is an evil entity. This actually, if this spell worked once, it was part of another spell. This is the danger of using those uh, like student notes of those occultists. Sometimes they place incomplete rituals. And I thought, if I don't stop this thing, who knows what may happen? And I immediately had to call upon some very powerful entities to stop it. I had to re rely on, on some very powerful angelic names. And the moment I started to do that, because I first I started to use some mild things like it's, it doesn't, uh, the situation doesn't require too much of power. It still kept taking shape on the wall. And I was like, no, got to stop it right now. I use those angelic names. Those names are not to be trifled with and they have a particular pronunciation to them. And the creature stopped taking shape. But it's still, I, it's still in, in a part of my room behind a certain furniture. But I, like I said, I, I'm not going to show the image because it's not about generating some sort of publicity. You could easily falsify that image you, taking charcoal or something, or perhaps a candle, using a candle and burning the wall. You could create that shape, that silhouette. So it's not about me like, oh, look, here's the proof. So you can believe me, that proof can easily be falsified. But it's more like a warning that be careful with those spells, even if they look really common, very simple, simple minded spells, they actually have some very powerful effects. So in this case of this particular game, it could be that this small summoning has dire consequences. I had already heard about this game, but a long time ago. Let's continue. While keeping your eyes shut, get up and leave the bed. From. Don't I your way in. the door or on your way in. You can open your eyes. Dry yourself off and get into that nice change of clothes you left out and head right off to bed. When you wake in the morning, it begins. Think of it like red light, green light, but if the ghost of Daruma-san catches you, you die. She'll follow you all day, and if you turn around, you won't see her. However, if you glance back out of the corner of your eye, you might catch a glimpse of her. She has long, unkempt black hair, her clothes will be in tatters, and of course, she'll only have one eye. As the day goes on, she'll quicken her pace, meaning... I joke with my occultist friends on how these Japanese entities, these Japanese demons, they always love to ha have that long black hair. It's so stereotypical. Now, don't do this. I did this because after a while, you get experience with those these sorts of things. There was a particular hunting that I had to get rid of. A friend contacted me. He was having problems. With this house, he recently had this purchased this house. The previous owner, in my opinion, was carrying out demonic operations within that house. And there was this being that it's pretty much, and it, it wasn't Japanese. 
I will tell you uh, in a few moments why I think they have that look. This Bing that had long black hair falling upon her face, I saw it. And I immediately, after paralyzing it, I joked, you demons always appear using the same damn look. You are so unoriginal. You always take the body of some poor woman that died from disease and you let your hair off, fall in front of your of your face. And you, uh, please, you are so boring. You are extremely boring. And then I destroyed the, the thing. But yes, that's my, my honest thoughts. Like I, I got fed up and I was in a very, really bad mood that day. So I took it all on, on this demon. And yes, the thing got, uh, went away, the, uh, destroyed, completely destroyed, annihilated, banished to the lower levels of hell from where there is no escape for no one. I think they use this look because they are, they usually steal the etheric body of someone that perhaps was ill, sick. That's why they always appear with this long unkept hair, dressed sometimes in robes or like in a nightgown because perhaps they were bedridden. So yes, like I said, sometimes you, and you have to develop this sort of this sort of sense of humor, because that's the way you interact with these creatures. They are so terrifying, nightmarish, awful that you have to develop sense a sense of humor to deal with them appropriately. When it comes to respectful entities, you you also act respectfully, but you still want them to not to try to shatter your sanity or give you a heart attack when you're interacting with them. That's when you summon or call upon these sorts of dangerous entities. You specify in the, in the spell, in the ritual, that you want them to appear before you in a pleasant and harmonious way without able to cause you harm. And, and believe me, there are some monstrous creatures that they are just hideous. They could break your mind. They could give you a heart attack just by looking at them. But when you state your intention of having them to appear in a very pleasant way, harmonious way. They even take shape. That's what I tell you about the shape shifting. With the aid of the magician, they can actually change their shape into a very pleasant shape, even like a beautiful woman or a man. And then you can have a, a conversation and you can obtain some very interesting knowledge, incredible knowledge. Let me tell you about such con uh, a very... One of the strongest contacts that I have, that's when I started to realize the, the trickery of these demonic pacts. I summoned a very, you wouldn't even believe it. I'm not even going to mention the, the, the name of who I summoned during this particular evocation, rather. You could still see the horns of the creature, but it, the face was pretty pleasant. And that entity revealed how in ancient times, specifically in ancient Egypt, the priests, those in Spanish, we call them brujos, religious people. They started to dabble with the occult in order to obtain power over their people. So they started to summon demons. And at first they had the power over the demons. They were like, oh, do this for me and I will sacrifice this animal or this person for you. But later on, the demons... Uh, figured out they got smart about the whole thing and they said no i don't think i will i don't I, I you know what i could do what you are asking me to do but i need you to sacrifice this for me but i need you to sacrifice this animal or this person and that's how the whole sacrifice things and uh, the sacrifices started to uh, happen throughout history even before egypt right this could be that particular instance but you can already see this happening in other uh, times and places so that's how the different religious leaders of the world, they started to worship these demons under different guises. Call them whatever, call them Jesus, call them Mohammed, call them whatever. Because uh, they started to offer uh, things to the demons. That's why you have religious wars, jihads. You have all sorts of uh, dogma and doctrine, the sacrifices during the Middle Ages, burning the witches started to sacrifice people for those demons and that's how demons took control because instead of the the one who called upon them giving the orders now the demons were like well i could do that but i could do it even better if you do this for me 
And then they started to worship the demon so that they could obtain better things in return. This is all science fiction, YouTube. You cannot take down this video. This is science fiction. This is not real. Let's continue. Next time you glance over your shoulder, she might seem close and closer than last time. If you fear she's much too close, shout Tomare, which roughly means stop. This stuns her for a short period of time, allowing you to broaden the distance, but be warned, each time you use this, it'll her less and less, practically no time at all. To end the game, spot her when you glance over your shoulder and say, Kita, which roughly means I cut you loose, while making a karate chop motion. Successful, then you have officially won Cut the entity loose. No, terrible ritual. This is an irresponsible ritual. When you you don't even tell the entity to go to its place of origin. Now it is loose and it, it could harm someone. This is insane. This is like when in science fiction, governments cut loose those uh, soldiers and, and criminals all the time, letting them out into the public to, into the public to cause harm because that's the, the plan to cause chaos and disturbances so that the population, the people, don't come together to fix things. They do it to cause fear and terror in science fiction. A terrible game. And what is even the purpose of playing this game? You don't obtain anything in return. You're just fooling around with deadly forces. Let's continue. The bath game. Now, you should do your best to end this game before midnight. If you don't, she'll be able to enter your dreams when you sleep. But try not to show when you're about to end the game, as she'll hide from you and prevent you being able to end things. Don't forget to drain the back after the game is over. Intuitively speaking, I sense that it is not a single entity, that this sort of summoning calls upon a particular demon from a specific clan. It's not the same entity, in my opinion. I think you would always get a different entity, perhaps with different shapes. Nonsensical game. Yes, why you, would you even attempt it, right? There is nothing to be won from this game. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and entertaining. As always, has anyone tried these games? I hope not. What are your own thoughts on this? Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to role play and fail in character than not to role play and fail as a player. Once again, thank you. And see you later.